Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. We have Sita right between us. Yes, Sita says, hello, everybody. I'm working on my nice manners. Hello, everybody. Uh, sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> hello. There you go. That's a good one. Cindy's got it. We, we want Sita to go. She wants to go to to uh, be nice, learn to be nice to people classes. That's what we're thinking. Sita's a little protective, we've discovered. But um, you would never know it looking at her. She's cuddled right between Mike and I. And we, we don't see a, a ornery bone in her body, but she loves her mommy and daddy. So she just, uh, yeah, be nice to people classes is what we're thinking. Absolutely, and I wish people could be nice to each other more, and it is the case that they are in other ages. I am uh, very happy and excited to, to see that there's a lot more. When I go and look at the cycle of the yugas, as you guys are probably familiar, we've shown this one before. This is all based, as you see, this is yogananda.com. It's all based on Sri Yukatswar's uh, book, The Holy Science, and his revision of what he felt was inherently wrong uh, with how people were commonly in his time, which wasn't that long ago, as uh, if, if I remember right, he probably passed on about 100 years ago. Um, and his disciple, Yogananda, uh, impacted so much of the Western world in such a positive way with his book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. Well, you know, the timing, it, it, we have gotten that even this is still off a little bit. So looking at, at it from a technology standpoint is really what he was looking at about 1700-ish. He said, you know, with the Industrial Revolution, that was the turning of the wheel. But what we've gotten from the guides was the wheel literally turned on the eclipse and so to me that feels right i i don't know about you guys but when they're not chemtrailing and the sun is out it feels like it's going up a notch to me it really really does um each yuga is a unique uh time period in our history and we experience new things so this is showing the earth's location 13 percent into the ascending energy age in 2012 but it, what we get is we are just putting our toes in right now. We literally just put our foot out of the Kali Yuga. And so what does that mean? Well, everything is going to unravel pretty quick, relatively speaking. And it's absolutely, while we're not stepping foot into a golden age after the dark age, we go into the bronze age. It's exciting, guys. It's exciting. This is uh, somebody's new one I hadn't seen before. Yeah, you can view it as a, a negative cycle and a positive cycle, yin and yang, ascending, descending. It's all the polarity uh, of everything that we see. I also don't think um, that we got this time frame down. I don't even know if it is possible to get the time frame down is what I'm coming to right now. Uh, because I, I don't think time is what we think it is. It, it's, it's, again, perceptive relative to the position of the person's consciousness and i was saying to cindy I, I i just feel like things are just radically different to me they're radically different but uh, at the same time maybe it's because i'm having radical um radical thoughts radical concepts um revision in some ways to the way i've looked at things uh, a little bit of a nudge in this direction a little bit of a pull or tug in that direction we have to be pliable guys this is part of it we never want to get set in stone when you when you look at things from a very fundamental uh fundamentalist aspect y you're stuck you are stuck like the system and the system is stuck you know fundamentalism is is being stuck it's being just totally stuck with no hope of growth. And that's really, really sad. But here you see another um, look at it. You know, the Kali Yuga, the material age, the Dwapara is, is kind of an energy age. Electronics they have down there too. Uh, mental, Treta, and Satya. Um, again, we don't really agree with this either. But hey, I just love to see new people putting their thoughts in experiences out there that's wonderful so we are in our estimation 
uh, we are stepping into the Bronze Age. Oh, the Bronze Age is exciting. In fact, we've gotten from some guides that the Bronze Age is probably the most exciting. I, and, and there's nothing more exciting than an ascending Bronze Age as opposed to the descending Bronze Age. When, and I'm hogging this, but I just want to get this across. And then my, my beautiful, lovely wife can speak for hours and I will keep my big fat mouth shut um, because she has so much to share and, and she has so much to contribute to this world. And she is, she has been my greatest teacher here uh, just to share. When we are in the descending Dwapara, which when we look to uh, the Ramayana, it's thought the Ramayana is right here at the line between descending Treta to descending Dwapara, going from the silver into the bronze. It's thought that the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita is right here, going from the bronze, stepping into the darkness. Now, we're going the other other way. So you have to realize, too, uh, the way we act and the way we react, it depends on where we are in this wheel because you don't necessarily act and react in the same way. Here, you're trying to fend off. You're trying to fend off an assault by the system any way you kind of could, uh, scratching and clawing, and at the same time, you want to hold your frequency. Here, now, we want to clean ourselves off from the muck and the mire. Now is the time for us to shine and sparkle. Now is the time for us to throw away all that no longer holds uh, any sort of teaching relevance to us and just release it and let it go. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I think Mike's point of view on it all is very, very important when he when he speaks about this because he can reach people in a, in a 3D way, in a very educational way, in a very cookie-cutter way where people can understand what he's saying. So, I mean, I just sit here quietly and I let him do his thing. He's a teacher. That's what he does. Um, I see things a little bit differently, but that doesn't mean I disagree. I see things from another dimension. So when I'm trying to explain things, it, it, it's often where people are like, what? What is she talking about? I, I'm just doing my best seeing it from the point of view that I see it. And some people get it. Some people don't. So I, I think both of our uh, input is is helpful. But when I look at the, the yuga cycle and speaking of time, um, I feel it, it's all dependent on our place in uh, outer space. Where are we from in relative? To, to the sun you know where is the sun because the sun is information it is light it's instant and how does that hit us so I, I think our placement in the in the universe you know as far as the sun is concerned that's what we might call time so if you're on another planet the time what we call time is going to be different um but when do things change? Things change when consciousness changes. It, it's not a date and time, but a placement in the stars. And, and that's something that we can learn a lot from is, is the stars. The stars are uh, our clock, you can say. That's the clock. And, and simply a lot of people are not made aware of how important the stars are and what kind of a, a clock they create for us. A lot of people didn't really understand either. They didn't understand the uh, the um, the eclipse that we just had. I, I knew it was significant. I knew it had a lot to share. I knew it was going to be a big, big change, but I didn't know exactly it was actually the change of a yuga until I got the information and then I was allowed to have it and then I'm allowed to share it. Um, they give me information to share when it's it, when it's important that other people know. So, I mean, that was kind of interesting and curious that it did come on the eclipse. And that's why it made that eclipse very, very rare. And, and I think uh, people in the media felt it. I think alternative media felt it. And they made it out to be something that it was not. But it's still a significant eclipse. It it's just wasn't something that was going to bring about, you know, death and destruction on that day. But definitely the death of an old system that's falling away is what it brought. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> again, what Cindy was touching on. Yeah. And the energies of each of the constellations is, is unique as each star is a consciousness. It's a massive consciousness. 
you know, again, try to think about an orb, a spirit orb being a typical human when we're out of body and, and going about. Think about the size of the suns. These these are ancient beings. These these are in in reality, these these and, and my belief is that these are our higher selves. Uh, again, each one of us is a unique being. So where we are in relation to the stars is, is truly everything with the consciousness. And this is also something that's reflected in the yugas. And again, we are star seeds. All of us, really. Every single person here has lineage that comes from somewhere else. Now, it could be, uh, as we've given and others, I think, have seen similar that around two-thirds of the souls that are incarnating on earth right now are unique to earth you know these these are newer souls that have come in for an experience um i want to kind of liken it to a huge event right and when there's a huge event often there are lines that will go around the block waiting at the box office to try to buy your tickets to get into the event this is where we are at this point in time. Now, what are the controllers doing at this point in time? They're limiting the seats. They're limiting the seats by making it so there's less vehicles available for people to come into and inhabit and go ahead and expand outwards and change the parameters that have been in place on this planet. And this is something I didn't intend to cover in this video, but somebody's given me this to cover. So when we look at the fact that, you know, at our peak, if their numbers are right, we had about 8, 8 billion people on the planet. And if, you know, their goals are met and they, they get it down to 500 million, again, it, it's easier to try to control 500 million than 8 billion, especially when so many of, of the 8 billion are star seeds. One, one third is what we've gotten of the people that had incarnated into Earth to be alive at this point in time had incarnations on other planets. So we just automatically know things like there's life out there, life is abundant, you know, creation's all about life having a, a place to go explore. So there's going to be an abundance of life everywhere. That's just a given. It's just obvious. The Earth is not the center of the universe. Uh, of course, you know, each of us have our own center of the universe. So that part is, is relative to the perspective of the individual or the apparently individuated consciousness, which is really just one drop in the ocean of consciousness in the bigger scheme of things. So when we look at this, what are they trying to do? They're trying to make it so that the numbers that are on the planet are those that are under their control. And, and so they're going to limit the number of those of us that are coming in to shift the perspective so we have less influence during this time of great change. This is the main reason why uh, they are limiting the um, amount of people that are going to have 3d bodies to inhabit and explore on earth at the same time the dna is awakening because you know one would not be remiss if one looked to the sun and felt um, like a swelling of reverence in your heart at just the concept of a sun because the sun is source in the sense that that's the closest representation you're going to see to source and to the light that is within all of us. And, and the sun is a relay for source and a relay for the creator of this universe to send out signals to enable the original program to start to enact. The, the sun is the great reset button that eliminates their great reset by initiating bigger changes in the consciousness of all of us. So this is something that's definitely happened before and you can kind of see how the sun has come to the rescue before and come and fried all of their equipment. So people look at the sun and they're like, oh, thank you, God, <laughs> we can go about our way now. We can be free. Um, you know, the sun is going to do its job when it's time. Uh, time, time, timing is perfect. You have to trust it. You just have to know that things are happening as they need to when they need to and that can be very difficult for some people especially those who might have a lot of trauma and, and are and are struggling they just want things to get better and the world that they live in is quite miserable 
and and this was kind of fun information that that came up this morning the sun is very very active and when i asked well why is the sun active these are other beings other entities coming in and out it, it's going to have an effect on the sun like on the skin on the surface because it's a cell so whenever something is coming in and out you're going to get a little you know a little niche of information change there so i thought that was fun please expand on that because that is so important so here here we are given science that talks about uh sun regions and stuff and and you'll have you know some scientists that'll look at you like you're stupid if you don't get this what this is is totally different from what we're being told the sun is uh in so many ways it's it, it is a wormhole this is how beings travel from one one place to another um, this is how intergalactic travel is possible and I will share with you guys that um, gosh how do I talk about this without getting into trouble um, well you guys know you can do uh, certain journeys down to Peru and stuff and do that one substance that will make you yak and vomit and, and bo you know, both ends and, and, and you see things uh, at a deeper level of the programming. Again, we do not uh, encourage any sort of mind-altering substances uh, or the use thereof. That's a big disclaimer, and this is all for entertainment purposes, as our uh, brother, Dr. Joe, was uh, saying on his uh, interlude with us briefly, and hopefully he'll be back and doing more videos with us shortly. And by the way, um, please send out your prayers for uh, Dr. Joe's mom and your best intentions for Dr. Joe's mom. And we'll leave it at that. And our beloved Sean, too, because Sean has been with us the whole time. And Sean is um, just a wonderful uh, lady uh, that is like a mother to Cindy and I or an auntie in so many ways and is going through some challenges right now. So please do uh, send out your positive intentions and prayers that way as well. She is one of the uh, one of the forerunners and a very very powerful entity uh, here on the planet. As so many did come through uh, in that generation just a little bit before mine, like my sisters in the '60s, and and these were the way showers that were paving the way. And of course, the system always wants to uh, take things down a dark road. But, you know, there are those that will not step foot in darkness and will not um, not swerve from their mission. And, you know, at this point in time, uh, I just want to send out positivity and prayers as she's facing a lot of health challenges as well. And so coming back to this what what these are is is in reality you have a lot of beings that are coming to check out the show this is what we were alluding to that line is around the block right now you know both for souls that want to come and incarnate on earth now there are some souls like my father uh made reference uh, through cindy speaking to me saying that I'm the crazy one that comes at these times. He came a, a generation earlier because he, he didn't want to be here for these particular times. So he enjoyed a more mild age uh, than what we're going through right now. But there are those that love to just come and watch what's happening as consciousness is going to expand and also those that actively want to take part in it. And a lot of very, very benevolent high-level teachers would incarnate into uh, the planet at this point in time. And certainly the dark system doesn't want a whole bunch of Yeshuas or Buddhas coming through at this time to, to guide humanity. That's the last thing that the system wants. But the good news is that we will be interacting with the benevolent ones with, that have not embodied as humans uh, in the Bronze Age. So, yes, you know, even when the system uh, will hide disclosure, uh, it doesn't really matter because hold your frequency higher and you will uh, be able to uh, create the conditions where you may be contacted if that's part of the bigger picture for you. And they will be guiding those that stay out of the system in how to truly uh, raise your frequency so we can move up and out of uh, it, this darkness in entirety. Mm -hmm. 
So we have many different beings coming in to watch watch humanity and help guide humanity as well for those who are who are uh, wanting wanting that. So the key word is want. You know, you have to want it. You have to know that it's there and if you keep your frequency at a certain place you can see past all the bs and you can see past the veil quite easily so you, then you know what is happening and and you know what these other beings are trying to do and keep in mind that that butterfly that butterfly that's coming out of its chrysalis it needs the struggle that struggle is so very important to get the wings moving and get the wings so that they're going to be able to flap and help that butterfly fly away and move from flower to flower to flower so the struggle it's very real but it's also very important so our our star family who can be confused for aliens we know many people who have uh, after sessions with us have gotten to see their star family. I mean, it's, it's a really, it's truly a beautiful thing. They will come and they will help you, but they know how important the struggle is and they will allow that to happen for your freedom. So I really want to express that, that if you're going through a very hard time, there's a real good reason for it. And I'm so sorry. And my heart goes out to you. If you're having a very difficult time, it's not easy you know, look, look, look to friends, you know, look to, look to family, look to help wherever you can to find that little bit of support to get you through those moments that might be so very difficult. Absolutely. So, you know, again, what we're seeing is, is a lot of ships literally coming through the sun as they do travel through the sun, you know, the space, what we're talk, taught about space is not accurate. It's not a void. It's, it's more akin to a very, very, um, thin form of water and look at what the sun does it's it's all about hydrogen and helium you know what's hydrogen well h2 oh right <laughs> it's so you know it, everything is is kind of um totally totally off when you get down to it now what i wanted to also talk about is in this time period here where the time period where the Ramayana took part in descending Treta, going from the descending silver into the bronze, is is the time when one particular uh, refugee came to the planet with her parents. Her, her parents came here from elsewhere, and uh, she settled in uh, this area where Cindy and I are now living in the more central U.S. Uh, with her parents amongst those that were living here right now, which were many uh, what we would call indigenous Americans at that point in time. There were giants, there were extraterrestrials. Um, you know, again, in the Silver Age, humans uh, live a much longer life. And even now, going into the Bronze Age, by the time we're done with the Bronze Age, humans may live a thousand years or more. Um, according to tradition and we do get that that's the case we do get that even right now uh, again uh, people are going to live two three four times the lifespans that we've had and yet the people that go into the cities the people that decide that they're going to uh, stay in the system their lifespans are going to get shorter and shorter in fact, it'll be more like Logan's Run. You remember that Logan's Run show from way back in the 70s where like when you hit 30, your time is up. It's very much like also uh, the replicants uh, from Cloud Atlas. Uh, and if you want to see a mind-blowing movie and you hadn't seen Cloud Atlas, definitely check it out. So... Dolly is her name. Dolly is what we call her because Cindy first encountered her. We encountered her because <laughs> she has a penchant for turning off our lights and opening drawers and moving things. And so she would flash the light on when we were outside in, and doing mantras uh, in the evening hours. Uh, we'd find the porch light going on and off and it was her. And then come into the office to work the light goes on and off it's her and literally she has rearranged at times we have uh, like three different little altars that we have set up 
and uh, there are different statues and different stones and and different things there and she has totally rearranged them she could actually move physical items and she does and it was like wild because she actually took groupings of, of the different statues and changed them uh, it's fascinating stuff. There's many reasons why they say in, in the Bible, thou shalt have no graven images, because it can enable you to connect uh, to beings on, on higher densities. You can also literally create golems yourself, uh, as we are imbe in, in, embedded with source material in us. So we, have, we are all creators. We are all creators. We're in training. You know, and we're we're trying to get our our training wheels off, and and you could start to get your training wheels off in Dwapara. You could take maybe one training wheel off in Dwapara, relatively speaking, as we're going up the ascending age. So you know, Dali is humanoid, and um, we were going to share the closest representation we could get to her, as there was nothing that that looked really like her. Her her skin is is totally red. Um, and could be uh, disconcerting to some people because of the, the real depth of red that her skin is. Her eyes can change color. Um, they, they can go from an almost black to more of a... They can go from like black to red to red to black. <laughs> very, very... <clears throat> if... if anyone were to see her they would feel that she was she was a demon i mean that's just what we believe in this world that demons have red skin black hair their eyes are black but she she's a very sweet gentle little being and she's alien she's not from this planet and i gotta i gotta wonder you know is she from L lyra i kind of feel that she's from lyra and it used to be that this planet was full of different beings who looked different so you know judgmental back then and judgmental now are two totally different things you know you would look at her and the way society has painted everything and you would think well she's a demon and and um, she would disturb a lot of people if they were to see her and sometimes people are not allowed their their sight or their vision because higher self knows that you would totally freak out and it it, it wouldn't be a pretty picture so higher self is really in charge of a lot of things when it comes to people seeing different entities or seeing different aliens you're protected uh, for a reason for a very very good reason but she's she's one that she definitely we call her Dolly because she enjoys playing with the statues in our temple in our in our temple room and she does move them and she likes to charge them she likes to teach Mike how to charge them and teach Mike things about them and they're very important to her and she just loves them so that's where she spends a lot of her time and she spends a lot of her time out on the trees she also plays with the dogs and Sita is one that can see things that other people can't. So I know that Sita has definitely seen her and played with her and interacted with her. So it, this is something that, you know, it kind of goes on in our private home that we don't normally share that we thought some people might enjoy and appreciate. And maybe maybe you have some, some little friends of your own. And, you know, these casual conversations are where some of the information has been filled in um, from other message that we've gotten from the guides. Like with her, you know, she does see, she can see uh, the grays and she could see some of the dark entities, uh, but she knows how to shift her frequency so they can't see her, but she could see them and she she does watch them and so when she first came through she was warning me um she came through and cindy was totally in trance and she was warning me that they're they're out there in our woods and they're watching they can't get too close to you because you're protected but they are watching they are looking for uh any opportunity to kind of cause havoc with you but this is the way it is all the time for us and you know, so we, we are aware of that, but we're grateful that she was sharing that with us. And she shared a lot of things, you know, and this is how also we, we, we get the fill in. So she saw how the system, you know, came into being because she was there. And 
she saw how they systematically hunted down uh, other aliens you know that had come here as the earth was tiamat tiamat was destroyed in this war and then the super consciousness you know the the creative energies of the super consciousness with also those that we will call the Galactic Federation. That's when the Galactic Federation literally came into being, was in order to reconstruct uh, Tiamat and give rebirth in the physical plane because you can destroy the physical shell of a planet, but you still don't destroy the being because that being still exists say if we destroy the 3d shell it's still there in 4d it's still there in 5d it's still there in six it's still on, it goes up on through the densities they, they can't destroy that yet the collective super consciousness came together and pulled uh these pieces the biggest pieces back in together and this is what the earth is the earth is created from the larger portions of tiamat the earth is not perfectly round it, it's more kind of like an appleish type of shape you know sort of a torus it may still not be completely um set as this is relatively recent in the grand scheme of things if i if i had to take a guess as to when this happened the destruction of tiamat and the recreation of earth from the information that we've gotten from the guides i think we're looking at 37 to 50,000 years ago um, that the earth was truly born from the remnants of tiamat so when you see things that are in eh, embedded in strata of rock that are millions of years old or billions of years old you're really looking at things from tiamat those were not you know this recreation of earth when you're looking at those metal spheres that come from siberia and certain tracks of dinosaurs and things you know again a lot of that is is really coming from the time of tiamat dolly saw them hunt down uh, her family and and other other survivors of the Lyran and draco wars they they were hunted down and exterminated and until they would have nothing left but homo sapiens because homo sapiens were uh the the manipulation so to speak they're not the creation they were the manipulation of some of the genetic material here on the planet uh, in a more dumbed down controllable version this is why we have a second chromosome fusion this is why we also have so much quote unquote junk dna because they literally turned it off in our bodies these other humanoid beings don't have that type of quote unquote junk dna because they haven't been uh they haven't been modified by a system that wants to dumb down uh the hu the humans here on the planet so humans of uh, extraterrestrial origin that had n direct knowledge themselves of of the wars were hunted down and exterminated and and this is what they do to this day when you saw um the biblical taking of canaan uh yeah they're they're hunting down and they're destroying the remnants this is what uh the biblical Yahweh is 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 having Yahweh is one of uh, the Anunnaki and and again uh, Allah again is something that could be directly translated if you look at it to Elohim which again was talking about the Anunnaki which are hu humanoid beings that have given in bent the knee to the system they have taken the AI into them. They are totally under the control of the Draco and the AI Borg Collective. So, you know, they were at some time, some of them were absolutely resistance fighting against uh, the draconian AI system. But then they, be, they, they bowed down to it and they joined it and they subject others to it and try to talk others into making the same decision that they made. But yet, you know, Dolly is still uh, on what we would call the 4D realm here on the planet. She hasn't left. She hasn't gone elsewhere. 
Uh, she enjoys this area. She has beings that are her friends in this area. And she does uh, communicate to us as well, you know, fairly regularly. And um, you would find in a Bronze Age uh, obvious extraterrestrial races that are not perfectly human, some that are obviously not human at all, just getting along fine with uh, other humans and many different varieties of humanoid beings here on the planet. Mm -hmm. So many, so many uh, more than, than I think a lot of people can perceive right now. But, um, you know, this is, this is the world that we live in and this is the information and the beings that come forward. And this is kind of a little peek into our private life and things that happen that you guys don't hear about that you heard about now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> it's, she's not the first. Um, and actually, you know, we picked up many, quote unquote, uh, ghosts, spirits uh, throughout our, our journeys as there was uh, a little one in Nevada and there was another one in New Mexico. And, you know, we, we've interacted with many ghosts. There was one that came in when we first moved into New Mexico um, that went into the house and thought, I guess I, w I would say, thought so loudly, hello, who's here? Because there was nobody in the place that we were renting, uh, the little cabin, before, and she could see that we were here, that Cindy and I both heard. And I thought somebody walked physically into the house, you know? And I was like, oh my God, somebody else is here. But no, it was it was just a spirit, you know, that had died along the road in a traumatic way and was still um, reliving that trauma. You know, this is the reality. Uh, we have so many uh, entities right now amongst us that are are not human, and yet they're not demons. There are demons. The demons are the one that gave you the fundamentalist belief system in the first place. Those are the demons. They're the ones that say there's only one way and, you know, it's it's the way of the Vatican or the highway or the way of any one true church or any true belief system. As soon as they start saying there's only one way and that way is anything other than love and compassion, you know they've exposed themselves for who they are. They are the demons. And so, you know, this is a little girl that appears to us to be I don't know, how old would you say she is? Maybe about 10? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, as far as human, 10, 10, 11, 12, right there. Yes, what she appears to be, but in reality, she's been here for thousands of years and, and hasn't moved on, hasn't decided to move on. She's having fun where she is, and so we don't always have to retake a body right away, too. This is where I think even in... Um, even in like the Hindu tradition, the Buddhist tradition, other traditions, I think they've all been kind of distorted by the system because what we see is there's an awful lot more choice out there and it's not so much um, like there's this reincarnation machinery in place that forces you to go right back in. Um, but it depends on your frequency and it depends on your expectations. So there is the danger. If you truly do believe that you are a sinner and, and that you deserve hellfire, then your, your consciousness just might create that for you. It is disturbing what our consciousness could create. And I, and I can tell you from, you know, your belief system really is everything. And the control system wants to give you said belief system because that controls you. It's it, you know, in, in this world, food and water is the most important thing that keep us alive. And in, in the control system, the belief system is what keeps them alive. So uh, keep, keep that in mind and everything that you take into yourself and truly believe, know that um, that can steer you one way or another. Absolutely. So it is an exciting time. We are heading into uh, the Bronze Age. We will interact with extraterrestrials and interdimensional beings. And, and to me, that's exciting because truly, this whole time, the only company we've had has been demons that we can see, honestly. Um, yes, and, and not everybody because some people can actually see the angels that are surrounding and protecting them all the time. So we are never alone. We've never, ever been alone in this journey that is just a complete fabrication indeed 
So hope you guys got something from this. Look forward to your comments and questions. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.